Hello and welcome back to the I League Season 2 Southeast Asian Qualifiers in a best of three between MVP Hot Six and sure Genesis. Time. Currently tied 1 1, the winner progresses um, into the qualifiers for a chance to um, perform on LAN um, in the I League proper. I'm Grant, so you'll be joined by Mike Lawyers here on the Cephala TV presentation of these games. And it's currently 1 1 because it is game three. MVP taking game number one pretty well. Genesis is taking game number one very sloppily, but they got it done anyway. Really, the name of the game, I think, in these two games has been who picks up more crowd control. It should be the fact that you should be always looking to pick up crowd control yeah, effects, but Hot Six are running really light or crowd control light heroes. And in last game, especially, it's been hurting them a lot. And game number one, they got around it because they had Brewmaster and Tidehunter and TA. So just the power level of those heroes, plus the fact that they are ultimates in some ways did have that AoE aspect to them and this stunning aspect of them. It helped out, but, man, this these drafts yeah, just have to be so much better. And this draft is going to be completely different from what we've seen previously. Viper, not touched in the last game, now is being first banned. Shadow Demon, same thing. And an Ember Spirit, which MVP have been banning out, is now first picked. So this is pretty weird after the last two games. It really is. Genesis are going to start things off with a Faceless Void and Death Prophet. A real powerhouse, and it deals pretty well with the Ember Spirit. Chronosphere, um, and then Yules into Silence is usually pretty good at locking down the Ember. Um, although Yules into Silence can get a little sketchy if he's jamming that button and your timing isn't absolutely perfect on this Silence. Um, it's still pretty scary for the Ember if he gets caught inside the Chronosphere. I don't know, I, I think what Genesis is bringing to the table already is a lot more stable, but Ember Spirit can snowball completely out of control. Picking up this early, however, is going to leave... Genesis is very open to picking up some really good heroes to lock him down sure in place. Time. Yeah, so you get silence and crowd control effects right off the bat. And when you're talking about CC, pretty much doesn't get that much better than Faces Void's Chronosphere. So MVP, they're going to have to work themselves uh, out from under this drafting hole already. Picking up an Ember Spirit first will do this to you. And now an, an Elder Titan MVP, they're once again going to be in a situation where they might run into no crowd control effects. And they're up against Faces Void. They need some CC and Genesis they've shown that they have no hesitation about picking up someone like a Weaver might make the lanes a little bit greedy but you know what if MVP still go on this light CC train then they will get sufficiently punished uh, Elder Titan and Ember Spirit is a pretty nice combination though they both are melee heroes the Elder Titan helps Ember Spirit do so much additional damage it gets pretty broken in the late game but it, I don't think late game should be where MVP are starting to focus it should be how do we survive Early game, how do we function early game up against the Death Prophet in lane? How do we beat a Faceless Void or force him away from the lane? These are all answers that MVP that need lame. to pick up within their next couple of picks. And answers that they just don't have right now. Genesis, even if they don't go for something greedy along the lines of the Weaver, even if they pick up just a really stable um, offlaner, like a Batrider, Tidehunter, which are both available in the pool, and if and neither of those, like a Centaur... Their lanes are still going to look pretty darn solid, and their just fighting potential is going to be really hard for MVP to deal with. Um, right now, it's reserve time. Oh no, just so peculiar how this um, draft has changed from game to game. Game three is completely different than what we saw from the first two. Yeah, I don't really know why they would change this up either. I guess, well, MVP they said they had like server issues and. Uh... Well, having some reconnects, disconnects, but they'll be fine. They said that they have sometimes lag on this server. So I would say, well, if they pick up heroes that are really direct, then that would be justifiable. But Ember Spirit is a finesse hero. If you have a lot of ping, you don't want to be playing Ember Spirit. So I don't even know what the justification is there. Um, regardless, we're still having some sort of draft. I mean, these heroes aren't, for MVP, like impossible to see. It's just kind of unexpected to see them here. Jakiro... And Sand King going to be oh, banned good. out. Uh, I especially like the Sand King pick, especially after game number one's Genesis play. And Razor now going to get the hit out from Genesis. Reserve time. As far as Genesis's next pick, as well as this last ban, I'd like to see Tidehunter in one of those slots, probably in the ban um, selection. And there you go. Um, they could pick up one of their supports. And right now, Skyrath Mage is still in the pool and would be really nice for them. Or the Venge. Um, which pick. probably is some sort of a deny pick, but still just all around a really solid support to have on your side. That minus armor synergizing incredibly well with Void and Death Prophet both. And also taking it away from MVP. They would have loved to have that one stun at the very least. Also having that minus armor synergy with the Elder Titan would have been huge for them, but instead it's up to Genesis to take that one up. Of course, MVP, if they really want minus armor, they can get it. 
I don't think that is going to be the name of the game, yeah, though. So uh, Dazzle on. is a possibility, but up against Faceless Void, you, uh, I guess Dazzle is fine in that situation. But they already have two melee heroes. Whatever they do pick up, it has to be ranged. It has to have some form of crowd control. Scarath is in the pool, and as far as shutting down Faceless Void, Scarath is a start. Or they can go for a Mirana. Now the ban of Shadow Demon is ending up making sense, but uh, yeah, usually you don't want to pick up Mirana unless you have really nice setup for it. Uh, right now, it is non-existent. Bane wouldn't be an awful pickup for MVP Hot 6, but that would mess up their lanes, or at least assumed lanes, um, pretty heavily. They'd have to put either the Elder Titan or the Mirana in a core role, which, um, although is doable, go. isn't the ideal situation for you. Um, yeah, seconds. the draft would have made a lot more sense if he switched to Shadow Demon and the Tide Hunter. But for Genesis, they have a lot of um, openings to look for their next Ooh, support pick. Skyrath Mage, I think, is probably the best selection that they could go for here in lane. Um, if it is up against the Mirana shutting down the Leap, can get a lot of kills with that Ancient Seal and just a point click silence on the Ember Spear. It's so <laughs> useful. Also, synergizing incredibly well with Chronosphere. I don't think there's any reason to not go for him, but it's going to be a Timbersaw instead for Genesis. We've already seen the damage that Timbersaw is able to put out. Um, and Hot Six are lacking a decent amount of lockdown themselves, but I would have liked to see them pick up the Skyroth instead. And also, but also. <clears throat> Sorry, I just choked on water. Uh, Timur saw really good against Ember Spear in that Ember Spear may be able to get some distance away, but his Flame Guard is not going to be able to do that much versus the pure damage of Timur saw. Damn, and as far as bursting cool. down Eldatine and Mirana, certainly very possible for the Genesis side. They already have enough Six. crowd control to be fine. Uh, generally, not a hero you want to have with the Phases Void, since Whirling Death Earth, and Timur Chain are very difficult to use when there's a giant blue bubble in the middle of the fight. But, you know, you could still get the Chakram in there. You already have the Death Prophet. For Genesis, they need one more support, and I think it should be a Witch Doctor as their last. Though MVP, they have the Silencer now up, was banned last time Genesis picked the Timbersaw, or at least in uh, game number one when they picked up the Timbersaw. So this is going to be kind of a nuisance for them. Still, the Silence from MVP, it's going to have to come out at the perfect time. If the Silencer doesn't use his GS really well, then he's just going to get so heavily punished because the rest of the team will just get eaten up by these high impact spells of Genesis. For sure. Time. Silencer is very good, as you said earlier, up against the Timbersaw. Last word is pretty damning for him. You want to be able to get off your whole kit and multiple times at that for the Timbersaw, but if you're last worded, you have to pick one, and one generally isn't enough for Timbersaw. He wants to combo all of them together with the Timber Chain, um, Whirling Death, and then follow up with the Chakra, or vice versa, however you actually shake those down. And then the Global Silence, if it does come out, and they can focus down the Void before the Chronosphere, is very useful. Um, but honestly, I think that Hot Six lack the damage. Unless they land an Arrow or Ember Spirit gets absolutely fed. Um, which just doesn't seem like it's going to be the case this game. Next bands are going to take quite a bit of time. Hot Six do have a lot of flexibility when it comes to how they actually lane these heroes. Um, so last band is actually going to be Damn pretty difficult for Genesis. So I'm not sure if there's anything that stands out immediately. It's going to be the Rubik. I think that's justifiable, at the very least having a stun, but uh, as you said, Ember Spirit is going to have to get really fed MVP. They don't really have that much damage. Elder Titan will amplify everyone, but it'll just amplify everyone into okay amounts of damage, not really high amounts of damage, which should be the plan. Ember Spirit being fed is going to rely on rotations from the Mirana, who at this point is looking more and more like a core, because Death Prophet versus Ember Spirit, if that does end up being the lane, which so far it hasn't, the lanes haven't really been predictable, so that might not be the case, but Ember Spirit does not have a good time there, and really no one on MVP, should they go towards the Death Prophet's lane, is going to have a good time. Maybe we're going to have another dual lane. Silencer Ember Spirit doesn't seem terrible, but it's certainly not going to win against Death Prophet. It might draw even. For sure. Genesis actually going to go for the Enigma. They definitely can get away with it, although Global Silence is going to be a pain for Enigma to deal with. Even if he has the BKB, you can still get that silence off. Does that actually cancel Black Hole Channeling? The uh, Global Silence? When you have BKB on. If you have BKB on, yes, it will. Okay. So, yeah, Enigma into Silencer is not what you want to do, ever. Yeah, that was kind of my thoughts as well. Yeah, it's going to give him some nice go. pushing power with the Eidolons, but he can't use that um, black hole until the global yeah, silence yeah. comes out. Medusa the last for MVP Hot 6. The plan is pretty much turtle up until everybody gets farm. Um, there's not anything ar um, work around that for Hot 6. And even if they do take this to a late game scenario, 
it's up against the phase of this void, Death Prophet, and always having that X factor of the Enigma Black Hole, even though they have a global to cancel it from literally anywhere. If Silencer is inside the Black Hole, or that's on cooldown, which is very likely, it's still an incredibly useful spell. I'm not so sure if I really like this choice from Hot Six. It just doesn't feel like it's going to be able to do enough early. I don't really, yeah, I don't really know if I like this choice in that I don't really know if I like this game plan for them. Clearly, MVP, they're not going to be super aggressive early on because they can't. Medusa's not that type of hero. Uh, Silencer is not that type of hero either. If he finds kills, great, but the odds of that happening, very low. Genesis' game plan with the Death Prophet, at the very least, is pretty simple. They're going to be pressuring your base. And now Enigma with the uh, last as the last pick for Genesis, so the black hole is not going to be very clean for him to come out with that, but it doesn't really matter because he will have Eidolons. Between that, those Eidolons, and the uh, and the Death Prophet exorcism, they will be able to take down MVP's base pretty darn quickly. And as far as AoE counter push for MVP, they have the Spirit from the Elder Titan and maybe a Snake, but that's about it. That's very nice until you realize that Andy and Vexus can just come out from the side and just kick your ass because of it. So Genesis, they have a very aggressive game plan, or a fairly aggressive game plan. MVP, they have no aggressive game plan at all. They needed someone else who could actually fight earlier on. I don't really know who a better hero would have been, but I don't think the, the Medusa is going to get any traction here unless she just has the best laning stage. Uh, we have a pause because, well, I guess server troubles or something for MVP, but they have their work cut out for them. Genesis, I think, just have a stronger draft. Definitely feels like that. Well, to introduce the Genesis side, we are going to have Nana playing on the Death Prophet, Andy on the Timbersaw, Vexus on the Void, 343 on the Enigma, and A on the Vengeful Spirit. <clears throat> For the MVB side. God, why can't I drink today? <coughs> All right, Sorry. Okay, <clears throat> Dubu is going to be playing the Marana Sunbi. He's going to be teleporting down towards bottom as the Elder Pen just to play some wards. Jube is on the Ember Spirit with Nuts on the Silencer. And then Raji's going to be playing the Medusa going up towards top. This is nice for the MVP side, although Elder Titan only has two ways of blocking camps. We'll see what he actually does with it. Last time, the MVP wards were not destroyed by Genesis. However, this time they have the Enigma, so they should be a little bit more willing to look for some counter wards. This one is most likely going to stick, though. You very rarely see sentries placed in range of this Observer ward. Oh, yeah. Um... It's also unlikely that they expect Elder Titan to have gone for this TP move to place that ward. It's going to spot out Enigma's rotations through the jungle. If he um, is farming over on this side of the jungle, um, over at that large and medium camp. And it's also going to block the um, other large camp. So it slows down Enigma and gives Enigma some, or, um, and gives Elder Titan some important information during the laning stage. If you're able to get the ward this deep in the enemy lines, there's no real reason not to. Timbersop towards top is going to survive, although only just is able to timber chain away to safety. Nuts and Raji can't really do that much except for poke at the Timbersaw, but then Timbersaw always has the chance of just turning things around and killing off Silencer because he is such a soft hero. If they keep their distances, MVP, this top lane should be pretty easy for them. Actually, they'll also have the Marana, so it'll be very easy for them. But Timbersaw, I don't think, is going to be in much trouble of actually dying here. It might be enough to keep him away from the creep wave, but uh, that'll just have to remain to be seen. Over toward the mid lane, it looks like it is going to be that Ember Spirit versus Death Prophet matchup. And Death Prophet has gone for a pretty stat-heavy build with only two tangos, very far away from her bottle. But the odds of her dropping low are extremely low. Outside of a Marana Arrow, it's just not going to happen. So the Death Prophet is going to have a very easy time over in this mid lane, and Jubei is not going to have a great time. And bottom lane, Elder Titan solo, he's also not going to have a great time. Just with the Vengeful Spirit poking at him by herself, there is also kill potential here for MVP. They don't even need a, a, a then, my god, they don't even need an Enigma rotation if they're going to kill the, the Elder Titan. It's yeah. hard to speak English. It's hard to English sometimes. It is. It is quite early as well. Um, up in top, Timbersaw, he is only going to be working with one Timber Chain. He has been denied his vision. Um, unlike the Elder Titan, his ward was pretty standard and is going to be taken out um, by MVP. So he's not going to have the safest of laning stages for himself either, if he messes up that first Timber Chain and last word is on him. Um, but then again, he's going to have a better time than Elder Titan. That's just kind of based on the heroes um, more than anything else. Time walk into Magic Missile should be pretty much enough to run down the Elder Titan, especially if a bash is involved. The early runes... Um, are going to be scared by either side. Nothing too interesting. 
All right, so we're going to see the lanes start to clash. Jubei is already going to have a decent situation, I suppose, unless he runs out of experience range. He's going to lose one creep worth of experience. Not a terrible huge deal, but uh, yeah, the block certainly being a little bit skewed in either direction. It's going to be fine for now. Soon being down towards bottom is already starting to feel the brunt of this lane. Vengeful Spirit doesn't have the most damage at level 1. Hitting for 48 is rather low. But as you said, time walk after a magic missile and the Elder Titan can just very easily go down just because of that. Not to mention the fact that Enigma is just going to be farming. So Genesis have heroes in all three lanes plus the jungle. And though their Timbersaw is being zoned out, I don't think he's going to be zoned out completely from experience range. In fact, he'll get a wave and a little bit of experience right now. So I think overall Genesis have these lanes they, were, they will have these lanes pretty much on lockdown, and MVP, they have no way of actually breaking out of this, except for finding a lucky rune. Yeah, and that's really, really sketchy to be banking on. Dubu, if he lands an arrow, maybe, just maybe, there's some killing potential, but even if there's a 5 second arrow, it's no guaranteed kill on any of these lanes. Um, the harass just isn't coming out on the enemy's side. Timbersaw is forced off of the lane for a little bit. He'll be securing um, the two-minute rune while this happens, so it's not the end of the world for the Timber. The lane equilibrium just is in a terrible place for him, and he is going to be able to pick that one up for himself, but there is a Marana close, potentially looking for an arrow. She'll look for the stack first, but that's going to cost her the rune, um, since she's just not close enough. It's going to be a bounty for Andy. And it's an illusion rune on down on the bottom lane, so once again the runes not too exciting, not going to influence anyone, and that's perfectly fine for Genesis. They have heroes that are more than okay with just chilling and farming, especially this void down on bottom lane, currently up against no one. We'll find Sunbi. Uh, lucky Bash? There's one Lucky Bash. Second Lucky Bash? No, just one. But either way, easy, easy, easy damage there, and Dubu also getting applied quite a bit of damage as the Marana, so this lane state, uh, MVP really have to break out of it. Their Ember Spirit actually isn't doing the worst versus the Death Prophet right now, but it does end up getting worse for him, the lane. Just the Crypt Swarm will hit that much harder. Nana's going to eventually get the bottle up. In fact, has enough gold for it right now. Best case scenario, MVP snipe it, and Dubu's in the perfect position for it. But uh, I don't know if this is... Actually, it's not spotted, so this could actually be pretty big. Actually, no, it can't. This is working out very well for Genesis. I don't know if by luck or anything. No, never mind. Oh. I thought the courier was going to wrap around. It's instead going to go back into the lane, and it might get picked off right now. Leap forward, 1-2 is oh, going to kill it. Courier. That was unfortunate. I thought 343 would have stayed there, and then the courier would have gone like up through the jungle, but it just yeah. worked out poorly for them. It really did. I, I thought the at the very least, the courier would take this path around towards oh, the DP. Mm -hmm. Um... Or even have Enigma, like, hold on to that bottle and deliver it in person to the Death Prophet after farming the medium camp. It's something you need to be careful of um, when the enemy supports are missing off the map. Maybe not at my MMR level, but um, <laughs> still. It's going to be really big for MVP. That's going to help their mid lane so much. I mean, it seems like that was the shortest distance. Just go up through the jungle, and you don't want to, really want to be wasting time with delivering that bottle. But now they're going to be wasting three minutes worth of time because they simply don't have any other options. And really nice pick off from MVP. Now they're going to try to go for a top lane push. It will be very minor. They have a Ring of Basilius turned on. They're zoning out the Timbersaw pretty darn well right now. The tower might be going down. There is a catapult here. But the damage from these heroes is really, really low at this stage. And he's going to get experience from this one. And he's also going to get a little bit of help. Ventral Spirit can't really do that much. But they're both going to be getting quite a bit of experience from this. So MVP... Though they're going to bring this tower down to half HP, not killing off the tower is going to hurt them quite a bit because Andy's now at level 3, level 2 Timber Chain, and Timbersaw is going to be so happy that he got that wave, wave and a half of creeps. Yes. Uh, Timbersaw does really rely heavily on that experience, and since that tower push didn't take the tower, um, I think it's an okay trade for Genesis, although tier 1's not too healthy at all, and will be taken eventually. Taurus mid, looking for an arrow, Dupe is at a decent position for it, but then again, um, Nana's on the right side of the creeps, leap down to the low ground, it's going to keep the Marana safe from eventual Spirit Magic Missile, um, but then again, that's pretty much going to end any chances of kill. Alright, and that's going to be that, MVP there mid lane is going to commence as per expectations. Sunbi is actually doing pretty decently down towards bottom level 5 now on the Elder Titan because the Venge had to, or decided to go up towards the top lane. Not much pressure being applied to the Elder Titan. They're going to try to catch him out. There is no Chronosphere though. Unless they get like two lucky bashes consecutively getting that kill is just not going to happen. So Sunbi is actually doing a lot better than I thought right now. The Enigma though, he's been more or less untouched. He's level 5 
five minutes in about where you want to be maybe a little bit slower there's some high expectations for enigmas but uh, it's going to be Nana taking an arrow towards the mid lane. Shackle's going to be lined up. There's a magic missile here. Nana can take a lot of fire damage, though, with the Enigma coming in. I don't think they can get this kill. It'll be really close. 17 HP. They will get the Ember before the Death Prophet dies, and then she'll turn around and kill off the Marana. MVP. It's a good attempt, for sure, but you got to remember there's an Enigma in the jungle. So they kind of walked into that one, although I think any team would have gone for that. Once you land an arrow, you kind of go in. Yeah, and it was so close to Nana abusing the fog inside that um, side of the jungle. There is going to be a go onto the Timbersoft top. It's going to be two intelligence stolen by Nuts as he pretty much secures that one solo. Medusa hardly had anything to um, really throw into that. Three in the Mystic Snake harassed him a little bit beforehand, um, but not much at all. Yeah, so the top lane is going to be reaping that reward. Two intelligence going the way of the silencer. Medusa almost at her level 6, so killing her off is going to be a little bit more difficult moving forward, although not by that much. Uh, yeah, the silencer is going to get a little bit of an additional start, and they're going to once again run into Andy up towards top. This tower now dropping closer and closer to deny range. You have to be really careful about that. When you're running a Medusa and an Ember Spirit, you really don't want your towers to be denied, like more so than other games where... Sometimes you'll be okay with it. This time is not one of those times. They're going to go for Zunbi down towards bottom. This time they have a Sphere, and they'll use it as soon as Elden gets out of the Midnight Pulse. Sure, it gets a kill anyway. Yeah, doesn't really matter. They use the first Chrono Sphere for the kill into the offlaner. It's going to be Genesis 3-1 as far as the entire um, laying situation is concerned. They're doing quite a bit better than I thought they would. And 3-4-3, um, even after that early ward was placed up by the other Titan, is still able to maintain his farm. And being involved in three kills definitely helps. He's well on his way towards the mechanism. In fact, that's the mechanism recipe inside the career. So just about 400 gold till he has it all the way done. Can't do nothing about that's going to be a really nice item as far as just pushing and punishing the MVP side. Once that mech is actually on his person, this push would be so much faster and easier. This creep wave would be at full HP. And well, Elotinen is actually going to get quite a bit of Astral Spirit value, plus 177, but he can't walk up here. He's going to be doing a lot of damage, but he's going to be taking just as much, if not more. Tower's down. First tower, or actually second tower, the top lane tower was destroyed by the Medusa, so good times there for the MVP side, but making an even tower trade, making it a little bit beneficial better for Genesis in the long haul. They're going to be running into Andy. They have chains available. They will use it to line up an arrow and it will connect, getting even more intelligence to the silencers. They take off the timber saw for free. Technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Inside the jungle, they are going to <clears throat> find themselves the timber and it is a decent pick off at that. This timber saw is doing a lot worse than I thought he would, especially when you compare him to the Elder Titan. Level 6 on the ET and only level 5 on the Timber. Down in bottom, bashes galore onto Sunbee. Vex is dropping low. He'll time for it. With no tier 1 tower, it's a very easy kill with the Death Prophet rotation. And even though Vexus is low, he's going to get a little bit of bottle love from the DP. And now the Titan, I think, ran out of that extra spirit buff, like, right as soon as the Death Prophet came in. So, unfortunately, time there. And at the meantime, A and 343, they're looking towards the mid lane. Jubei has his fire spirits up. And he should be able to get it out unless they just black hold the Ember Spirit. And they should be looking to do that. There's unfortunately no silence in the Death Prophet. So getting the kill on Jubei is going to be a little bit difficult. There is perfect coverage of the map right now for Jubei. He's going to put up the shield. Black hole got to be used right now. And they will do so. But the arrow is going to cancel it immediately. And Jubei is going to die anyway because of Andy coming in. That's one kill. Exorcism is out. And the Chronosphere is going to connect onto two. Nuts is not in the Chronosphere. But it doesn't matter because he's going to be eaten alive regardless. That's three kills. Going for four. Soon be bashed up. And now if they get another bash, well, it doesn't even matter. Another Whirling Death will get the kill. Medusa is nowhere near this fight as well she should be. But Exorcism, Black Hole, even though it wasn't the cleanest, Envy, or Genesis bring in so many additional heroes that MVP honestly didn't expect. No, they definitely didn't, and it's going to vastly favor Genesis. They take another tier 1 tower, that's your mechanism complete on the Enigma boots to be delivered. He used that mechanism for that push as well, and they're going to be able to pretty much dominate on the enemy side of the map. 343 going to find himself a really low centaur, and very easy to take down at that. Um, Anything they can deny away from MVP is really good for them, and for now they do have quite an advantage under their belt, upwards of 5,000 in the gold and experience. So 8-2, to two, and this game is progressing pretty much as to be expected for Genesis. They have the Death Prophet, they have the Timbersaw, heroes that are able to fight early, and they're doing so pretty damn well. Now the mech is up on Enigma, he's now going to pick up his boots and get his really basic items up. In the meantime, there's a Yule Scepter up on Nana, or soon to be a Yule Scepter up on Nana. Uh, top lane tower looking pretty good, and I guess the best thing happening for MVP is the fact that Raji has been undisturbed 
farming as the Medusa, but the rest of the team has been roughed up by so much that I don't even know if you could call that enough of a win to redeem the fact that everyone else has been suffering so much. Death Prophet ultimate cooldown up in 50, and once that happens, she'll have her Yule Scepter. Maybe they get this kill on Vexus right now as they're smoked up in the enemy jungle, but no, they're going to change their mind and instead go for the Death Prophet. This is probably a little bit more viable, but Death Prophet is hard to bring down. She's in a terrible position, though, so she is going to die almost for sure right now. There's the chains. There's the stone gaze. Even arrow's going to connect. Yeah. Stone gaze probably unnecessary, but it still secures them a kill. That's a killing spree going the way of the Ember Spirit. And Raji being involved in that's definitely not a bad thing. Phase Yasha now up on Raji. He's farming pretty darn fast. Not fast enough, however. The silence are going to follow up towards top. Gets the last word off onto A. Um, doesn't actually matter. They're just able to magic missile and Malphus him down. Bottom lane, they're also going to go for Sunbe. There's a haste rune on the Timber Saw. One of the heroes you just don't want to see with that haste rune, so he's going to make short work of the Elder Titan. Though they do lose their Death Prophet, taking two heroes in exchange, making it not the best for Genesis, but not the worst either. Their Death Prophet couldn't really been doing anything either way. And now they're going to go for Raji. Chronosphere reserved just for the Deuce. A level 1 mana shield is going to burn the entirety of her pool. And that is go going to kill her off in the end. There's Exorcism now up, plus Mask of Madness. Though they don't have a Chronosphere, they should be looking for some sort of tower pressure more than top lane. Yeah. Well, as far as this game is concerned, um... Yeah, they're going to find a Yules onto the Ember Spirit. One point in the silence is going to miss, but Jupiter still falls. Air lands on Nana after the fact, but Verona can't get that kill. I didn't think he'd get that with the silence there, but apparently there were no remnants for the Ember Spirit. And not enough mana even if he had them. That right click did a lot of damage. It did. Like, it, it did a lot more than I thought. I thought it would take like two or three right clicks, but no, just one hit, kill, easy for Nana, and now he's going to go up towards the top lane. Level two, Exorcism now up, 343. Doesn't have any uh, Eidolons working just yet, but I'm sure he will make them in a hurry. Timbersaw in the meantime is going to kill off Elder Titan yet again. Elder Titan has not had a good game at all. He's 0 5 0, Sunbi is uh, at the mercy of Genesis's heroes, and that's something that Elder Titan does struggle with. Nana going to try to set up once again for the Marana. This time, Silence is going to miss again. Come on, Nana, you got to be able to do that as a Death Prophet player. That's two for zero right now, or zero out of two landed, and while well, they still have a Chronosphere up in a minute, they're going to go for this push anyway. Dubu has to leap into the trees, else he'll just die. And if he doesn't go like right now, I think he's going to die anyway. He doesn't even have a leap, so that's that. They're going to jump in with the Ember Spirit, landing chains onto no one. He puts the shield up, but gets silenced immediately. They have a black hole available. Exorcism is going to work through Jubei so quickly. Vex is going to drop pretty low as well. Global Silence out, but Vex is not taking enough damage. He's going to be going down. Soonbi also is in a lot of trouble. He will be dropping as well. They keep the Faces Void alive. Where did the Ember Spirit go? He jumped all the way back into his own base. Exorcism and the threat of black hole, way too much to fight into. They drop Vex low, but that's not going to matter at all. They lose a the entirety of their top lane, and they might even lose Raji down towards bottom. No, he's going to be fine for now, but Genesis, they're taking this game by storm, and it's because they have a better early game. Their draft for right now is just so much superior to what MVP have. It really is. The Elder Titan, I can't say they had a bad game all of a sudden done. The early landing stage was okay for him, but after that, he just hasn't been able to do anything with those early levels, and currently tied for levels with the Timbers. Uh, actually, no, Timber takes his level 9, so scratch that. Um, but I think it's just kind of the fault of the hero. Elder Titan can't do much, even if he has a good start. He's there for the aura, and a little bit of extra counter push with the Astral Spirit, but that's about it. Yeah, the strength of Elder Titan is that he makes his allies stronger. Whereas for the Timbersaw, the strength of the Timbersaw is that he just kills things outright. So it's a lot more direct approach, a lot less finesse required. The problem is when you're running an Elder Titan is that you're going to make all your allies stronger, but you only have three allies that you could actually power up. The Ember Spirit is probably the most crucial one, but Medusa isn't going to get benefits from that until she actually joins the fight. And, well, bottom lane, that is the worst. Why would you even... Like, there's... What? Vexus is just going to back off. Andy is still invisible, so I suppose they could still get a kill regardless. Vexus is going to pop the Mask of Madness, going to try to go for Jubu. But there's Jubei right here. Arrow's going to be dodged. Vexus, though, completely out of mana. Here comes Nana. Might be able to make something happen. In the meantime, they're killing off Roshan at the exact same time. Genesis, what are you doing? Are they really going to win on both fronts? It seems unlikely, but a Magic Snake going through. Vexus dropping pretty low. Jubei with the jump forward on his Fire Spirit right on top of the Faces Void. This should kill off the Void. It's going to be close, and it will get the kill. Here comes Andy from the back line. What are the Enigma and Venge still doing? Roshan is not worth it. They will kill off the Murana with a Whirling Death combination. MVP, I guess they are just none the wiser. 
they are going to, I guess, win in both fronts. Now Timber Chain forward with the Crypt Storm through. Silencer and Sunbi taking a lot of damage. Silencer is going to be the casualty here. Sunbi is pretty bat battered up as well, and he's going to try to hide in the trees, but good luck hiding in the trees versus the Timber Saw. I can't believe Genesis actually got away with that. <laughs> Killing off Roshan very slowly, while at the same time taking a fight with three heroes. My god, yeah, that was even with the completely botched Chronosphere. Yeah, I'm okay with them taking the fight, or I'm okay with them taking the Roshan, but at the same time, that's... <laughs> I don't understand. It, it shouldn't have worked, I don't think, but MVP, they just don't have the fighting potential. They kill off the Void, but that's all the Genesis lose, and all things considered, that's pretty good for them. The net worth chart is looking pretty nasty for MVP, as everybody in the side of Genesis sans the Vengeful Spirit is... Really sitting on the top of it. Medusa is keeping up, but her impact, even with items, she's going to have an Ultanor presumably towards the Scotty, is limited at this point. Once she gets two to three major items, of course she's an incredibly scary hero, but with just a Manta or with just a Scotty Yasha, it's limited at best. It's like, great, you have your Scotty, great, you have your Lincoln's Manta style, you have all these items. We have Black Hole, we have Chronosphere. We don't really give a damn about what you have, and your backup isn't quite there. Global Silence is always going to be a threat. That's a given. Ember Spirit not really doing that well for himself. Has drums, phase boots. Actually, all things considered, isn't doing too terribly. But Genesis just have so much more right now, and they have so much more on so many more heroes as well. They have four really farmed heroes, and Venge is above three of the heroes from MVP. That is just not supposed to be happening at all in Dota ever, so... Genesis, they have their ultimate up on the Death Prophet, they have a Chronosphere up, though they're once again split pushing, uh, last game it's justified, this game if you're gonna go for a push then just go for a freaking push, don't be cute with it, and it looks like they will be moving down towards the mid lane, so this tier 2 tower, one of the last ones out for MVP is going to be brought down in a hurry, honestly I don't even know if they need exorcism for it, of course it'll make the Elder Tunnel less annoying, but yeah, tower's gonna drop, it is fortifiable, but are they gonna use it here? Looks like the answer is going to be no. It's going to drop as Vexus is going to, well, try to go for Raji. Backs up from the stone gaze, but gets turned to stone anyway. With only three points of mana shield. Raji now completely tapped out. He's going to be brought down. Ember Spirit Silencer coming in. Maybe a little bit too late. They're going to time walk forward. A going to get hit narrow straight to the face. We'll be going down right now. Chakram's already down the floor before the global silence actually comes out. Vexus getting short work of the silencer. Now we'll dive through and kill off another Dubu. He's going to try to run away from the Death Prophet. Good luck doing that. He's going to be brought down now. The Midnight Pulse to clear off all the trees. Jubei is invisible, but not for long. He's going to be brought down as well. A 4 for 2 plus a tower and MVP. They don't have their Elder Titan there. Maybe it could have helped them kill off the Faces Void faster than disengage, but there was no winning there. Genesis pulling so amazingly far ahead right now. Earth Splitter for nothing. Sure. Now Sunbi's actually in quite a bit of trouble. He's going to get Yule Sceptered up into the air. Chakram's going to block his escape path and the Whirling Death. My god, the damage from Timbersaw is so balanced. 12 Bloodstone charges. This is going to be two towers plus a five for two. This game is looking pretty out of reach for MVP, even though they do have Medusa. The Timbersaw, Enigma, and Death Prophet all are topping her in farm. Yeah, it's really scary. Currently 15,000 net worth advantage, 14,000 in experience as well. Genesis, there just doesn't seem to be anything stopping them. For nothing else, just the raw numbers in farm gives them an advantage, but also just their heroes are getting incredibly strong at this point in the game. Level 11 for Timbersa is one of those mini peaks um, when he just has way too much damage for the enemy team to deal with him. Faceless Void has Maelstrom on top of his Mask of Madness and is also trucking. Everybody from Genesis is going to be able to accomplish something inside the team fights. and even though MVP have the Global Silence and it came out at a pretty decent time the last fight, Genesis is just able to wait it out. MVP don't have any way to actually kill them off during that duration. Especially since Genesis are bulking up so much. Faceless Void, maybe not as much as everyone else, but there's a mech on the team, and there has been a mech on the team for a very long time. Bloodstone on the Timber. Death Prophet has a Rod of Atos now, and I think this is a great item to pick up on Death Prophet, especially in this game. Maybe not the best versus the Ember Spirit or Mirana, but the fact of the matter is that it will give you extra damage. It will also give you extra health so that you are just that much more durable. And it is an aggressive item as well, so it can end the game pretty quickly. Vexus is pushing mid lane by himself, is kind of going to get surrounded, but not really. He has a Chronosphere, and even if he does get jumped, he should be fine unless he gets arrowed. The breaking of high ground from Genesis is going to be the most difficult part for them. They have an Aegis and the Enigma, not really the best hero to have it on. 
but I think they're just so big that they can afford to split push at this point and look for random pickoffs with Chronosphere or random pickoffs with Timbersaw. If they make any one of those happen, then MVP, they either have to buy back or they're going to take a lot of tier 3 tower damage, if not outright lose the tower. Yeah, right now the Aegis has expired, but that was on the Enigma anyway, so it doesn't really matter. They're jumping for a Chrono onto Raji, and Raji, he's losing his mana too quickly. There's an arrow onto Vexus, and they might be able to turn onto the Faces Void, and the Earth is going to snap him back, but it's a godlike for Andy. They get chains onto Nana, but the Exorcism, my goodness, that damage. And now Murano wants a piece of it as well with the DD as well as the Old Scepter. Nana is going to survive for now, has bottle charges keep herself up, and honestly, you can't fight into Exorcism at this point. That's two, f or uh, yeah, two for one right now. Exorcism is down, so I suppose that's nice for MVP. They don't have to worry about their base being breached just yet. But Death Prophet now is going to get pretty much a full restore, plus has a Reaver in tow. Araji's back, but he was forced to buy out for this one, and yeah, I don't really know if it's going to be yielding anything right now, because now his Eye of Scotty is, is just that much further away. Genesis should be backing off right now because they don't have their cooldowns, but they don't even need to push the base, quite honestly. If they keep doing just what they just did, then they're going to be winning the game anyway. Like, eventually MVP are just going to get overwhelmed by a gold advantage of, of Genesis, and the fight for MVP, it was them getting initiated upon by Faceless Void, which is pretty much to be expected. Outside of Arrows, MVP don't really have any great ways of starting a fight. Maybe an Echo Stomp, but it's only level 1. Yeah, it... Doesn't really feel like they have a clean way to victory, except for Genesis messing up with the high ground push. MVP, they kind of just sit back, wait inside their base, and hope for the best. And that's just not a situation you can be comfortable with. They're at the mercy of Genesis. And MVP, I think their best bet in this scenario is to just stall, right? Like, they don't have anything that... Like, no item can just bail them out. There's no Blink Dag or anything like that that'll instantly win them any fights. Arrow maybe is going to be nice for them to get pickoffs, but they can't safely go out of the side of their base. The map vision is pretty much non-existent for both sides, but there is one observer over towards the mid lane, so Genesis will know if MVP leave. Uh, they just have to wait for this Medusa to get big and hopefully not lose the game beforehand, but that is a tall, tall order considering how far behind Medusa is. Right now, Enigma going to be going for a Crimson Guard for his team, apparently, with the Buckler as well as the Stout Shield and actually completed Vanguard on the Courier. Um, that's really scary. Genesis are going to have every tool that you could want to really push high ground up against MVP. Their magic damage is kind of nice, but honestly, if Medusa's split shot does like 30 damage a pop, um, doesn't really matter at this point. So, um, Genesis, they're going to be looking really good to push up high ground. They could wait for the next Roshan. We'll see when that's going to respawn. Right about now, it's two seconds. Are you kidding me? Genesis, if they knew this, they'd just back off, take it, and then push high ground. Man, this game really wants Genesis to win. Of course, I mean, they're so far ahead already, but having an instant Roshan respawn is also pretty darn nice. Crimson Guard for the Enigma. I think I like Pipe a little bit better, mostly because the Astral Spirit and the Snake are the ones to clear off the Creep Wave, and if Genesis had a full Creep Wave, then Exorcism gets that much better. Maybe they want their Avenge to go for that, although it seems like Venge is going for a Vanguard too. Uh, sure, why not? It's health, I suppose. If you want to end the game early, might as well go for it. But uh, yeah, Roshan is up, not scouted just yet by Genesis. They're all up on the top lane. They have all their cooldowns. It's time for round two, and round one was a pretty decisive win for Genesis. We'll see if round two is any sort of fight like that. Vectus is going to get started with an arrow. Swap out this time, though, and Raji, black hole? No black hole. They have to worry about the global silence, so they're going to fall back for now. Swap already used. Vexus kind of getting caught out of position there, but uh, Genesis can still keep going because they really don't have that much to lose from. Even a small botch team fight will still come massively in their favor. They also popped the Crimson Guard cooldown, so that is going to be not available for a minute, which is kind of unfortunate for them, but um, they have to wait for Faceless Void anyway. During this time, I think, um, push out the lanes a little bit, um, clear one creep wave down in bottom, then go for Roche, but they haven't scouted that out yet, so they actually don't know what's up. Well, they're trying to go for mid instead. Nana's going to get chained up, and here comes the arrow. Yule Scepter just in time. Death Prophet will fly right over that arrow and will be okay. But this is really not the way Genesis should be approaching this. Putting one hero on the front lines is probably the most risky way to do it. I guess they do have the swap, but here we go. Putting everyone on the front lines, that's how you do it. Exorcism up. 
fortification available and will have to be used. Raji is now packing that Scotty. Fortification is going to be there. Nana's going to get swapped out immediately. Vectus does jump in. No Chronos because of Global Silence, though. The Stone Gaze as well, forcing everyone back. And Nigma needs the Black Hole. There it is after the Global Silence. The Exorcism still ticking away. In the meantime, Vectus can be brought down in his own Chronosphere, but it doesn't matter because they're cleaning up everyone else in the back end. Raji's going to get stuck in a Chakra Room. He's going to be brought down. Buyback from the Ember Spirit. Arrow's going to fly through one more time. It will connect onto the Ventral Spirit, but still the Exorcism is going. Nana's going to get a full restore off of this one. They're going to bring down the Ventral Spirit. Andy still has a lot of health and, and mana. They'll bring down one. Genesis, they might lose their Enigma, but they're still just gaining so much with Sunbi also taking a fall. Gem of True Sight now on the floor. His silencer is up in the air. He's going to land right into a chakra room, and that looks like it hurts. He will be going down, giving an ultra kill to Nana Dubu, trying to take the gem and leap, but he doesn't have the items for it. It's going to be another Beyond Godlike streak for Genesis 2 now on both the Death Prophet and the Timbersaw, and they only have Elder Titan to worry about. There's 20 Bloodstone charges on Timbersaw, literally no respawn timer for him. This Rax is going to go down slowly but surely. Vexus has now re-arrived. He's going to be putting a lot more damage into this, and there's nothing the Elder Titan can do. This is going to be Rax's at the very least. At the very least. Right now, uh, MVP, their respawn timers aren't that great, be or um, aren't that long, because they are fairly low level. Um, so I suppose they have that going for them, but... Yeah, even if they had all of their cooldowns available, can they actually take fight? I don't think so. Nana is going to have exorcism on cooldown for 50 seconds, so Genesis probably should pull out here. Um, but I mean, does it really matter? I don't think so. We have an Agnum Scepter on Silencer, and based on how this game has been going, I'm actually surprised that he has that. Um, MVP, they're holding on, but for how long? Well, one of the three pillars of defense are now down for MVP. Uh, as far as items after that fight, uh, Faceless Void had to buy out just because... Oh, Dubu. That was a Chakram Whirling Death and a Chain. And Murana didn't even have time to leap out. No Force Staff time either. I don't know exactly how much damage that does, but it's a lot. So I guess that's fine. Roshan is now going to be spotted out. MVP, they have no Global Silence, although actually they do have a Global Silence and it will be Agonimed. That's maybe going to be nice for them, but this is a little bit nicer. <laughs> As good as Global Silence is, Double Chakra, if it does come out beforehand, man, Andy's just going to put so much hurt on the MVP side. This is going to be really dangerous. The uh, MVP, they do know about this Roshan being alive, but the question is, can they do anything about it? Ember Spirit, Medusa, Eldesign, really good in the Roshan pit, but Faceless Void, Enigma, Death Prophet, Timbersaw, all just as good, if not better. Yeah, especially with the amount of farm that they have. Usually, um, Timbersaw doesn't synergize that well with Chronosphere, but when you have double Chakram, it kind of makes up for the fact that you're not able to do Timber Chain Whirling Death through. If you just drop both of your Chakrams down inside the Chrono, heroes are going to fall. Atos onto the Ember Spirit. It's going to mean that his Spirit's pretty slow to throw back into the base, um, but he'll be able to escape, but this is Nana solo pushing out, or for the most part solo pushing out um, the mid lane and zoning out the entire enemy team. Shiva's Guard and Heart on Death Prophet? Are you kidding me? Like, even if they get an arrow on the Death Prophet... I don't even know if that's going to be lethal because they don't have any follow-up damage. The Elder Titan Aura is maxed out at this point, but now up against the Shiva's Guard means that Nana will have a lot anyway. He's going to go straight for Raji, trying to force out that Stone Gaze. Global Silence is there. Vexus does not have the Chronosphere out just yet, so that's actually pretty good for them. However, Arrow going to connect on Vexus. Where's the swap out? A is a little bit slow on the uptake, and he will lose the Faceless Void first. The Exorcism still going, but they're going to lose all their softer heroes. Genesis, Nana's in the back end, and he's just got to get the hell out of there. He will get himself a lot of distance, but that Global Silence might just have defended MVP's high ground once. Uh, the Black Hole, the Chronosphere, non-existent in that last fight. Death Prophet Exorcism as nice as it is, just not enough. MVP they hold. They just have to hold a couple more times and they're right back into this. But uh, Global Silence being down and Chronosphere and Black Hole being up, maybe Genesis can go for it anyway. Yeah, I think so. There's going to be a window where they have their ultimates and MVP don't. Um, and as long as they don't start that fight out exactly how that first fight went, um, which is a three-man stomp and arrow on the Faceless Void with no backtracks, is... Probably going to be in, into their favor, even though there's a Mantis style on Deuce, and she did a pretty decent amount of damage inside that last fight. Um, MVP, they need to replicate it exactly, and that's just not possible if you don't have Global. Alright, but Global Silence, fortunately enough, doesn't have the longest cooldown in the game. It's no black hole, so uh, Genesis, as long as they get a better one than a better black hole than the Global Silence, then they, maybe they're going to be able to get something done. Roshan is also a possibility for Genesis, and now that Global Silence is down, it's a lot easier to take Roshan. 
Though with Medallion on Vengeful Spirit, they probably could just walk right in and take it. Faces Void doing some pretty decent damage, and they will close in for that, or they should. Uh, Andy's pushing out the bottom lane. Now the Astral Spirit is going to spot Roshan. They already knew it was alive, though. It's a matter of time before Genesis actually commit to it, and there you go. Vexus is going to start. A and Nana are going to help out. And MVP, they're closing in pretty quickly. Raji can't really do anything, even if he does arrive, so... Roshan is going to be dying before MVP have a chance to react. And now there's a double life on Vexus. Now he can play as suicidally as he possibly wants. Earth Splitter is here. Drop something, grab the Aegis. There you go. Vexus is going to get stomped up. Maybe an arrow. What arrow? Come on, man. Seriously, Vexus is going to dodge the arrow, but it's going to be not to start the fight. Dubu is also going to try to run away from Andy. Timber Chain forward. Jubei trying to get alive, and he will get out because of the mech of Elder Titan. No one for MVP is going to die right now. But that's a small victory, if any. Raji going to get lifted up into the air. No, they don't have a Yule Scepter. Stone Gaze is out. Mech is out. And Earth Splitter is all out. MVP, they're going to have to defend bottom lane with just Global Silence. Yeah, and that's a really tall order, especially when you have a double life for your Faceless Void. And the way these fights have started out for the Void have been pretty terrible, but even if they do have, um, like, the arrow landing and Vexus gets dropped, um, doesn't matter as much because they'll have the second life. Blink of the enemy base just casually from the Timbers, uh, um, not much else to really follow up that. And Vexus did use the Cronus for on that Dusa. Double chains on the two heroes, so Ato Silence and Timber Chain through one of the illusions of the Dusa. But now with the Crimson Guard popped and the Exorcism no going, Tears of Tower not long for this world, even though the Glyphs can't delay things. Chalk of one onto the Medusa. He's gonna be silenced by that last word as Andy's we're just going to the back lines. Tier 3 tower, however, is not going to survive. Yule Scepter dodged the arrow, but it's going to land on the Vexus. My goodness, this guy's an arrow magnet. Looks like he's going to lose his Aegis. There's your global silence. Can they make it out alive during this duration? They're all on the back lines, and there's actually no kills after the global. Faces Void silence up after the time walk. Doesn't matter since Cronus is on cooldown anyway. 3 4 3 taking quite a lot of damage. Dodges the arrow, swapped as well by A. And now Raji in a very compromising position, walking up the high ground. Double Chakram. They are going to swing through him. Still has a decent amount of mana pool to keep himself at a, a high amount of HP. The jumbo with the faces void. Chronos here now for cooldown. Focus down Raji. Raji completely screwed. There's your double chakra. Black hole onto just Dubu because the other two are already dead. Onto the back lines. Ember Spirit and Medusa buying back. Getting the stone gates. It's pretty good position coming out from Raji, but he just isn't doing enough damage. Vexus will fall. And now the Earth Splitter flies through. Doesn't land onto anything. Silence under Raji. Double chakra flying through. Her man is getting drained, but not fast enough. With all those points in man shields, he's surviving for a lot longer than she probably should be, but is going to die. And that's a dieback for the Deuce. Down for 87 seconds. I don't think it matters. Top lane in full breach as well. The barracks are falling. That's one barracks down in top. Ato slowing down Juby. Timber chain through. It's a full five man wipe. And GG. Now this game was decisive from Genesis. Like the last victory of theirs in game number two. That was eh, barely a victory if you could call it that. But this one, man, they stomped MVP into the floor. MVP just way too greedy with their draft. They needed supports that could actually do stuff early on. They needed cores who could fight early up against the Death Prophet and Timmersaw. But they drafted themselves into a corner and they end up losing the series 2-0 oh, MVP, uh, or 2-1 MVP lose the series. Genesis are going to move on ahead. I could check the standings right now and I will do that right now. Okay, well, um, I suppose we can get through the other stuff. If you like the casting you see here, you can follow us on Heflo TV, at Facebook, Twitter, and here on Twitch. I'm Grandis V. I've been joined by Mike Lores for the duration of this series, and we are probably going to have some more games um, coming on later than this as well on this channel. Um, let's see what's actually going to be going on. We have, um, I believe, on Heflo TV 1, First Departure, um, is going to be playing against... Um, can't say whips. Um... And then we may or may not have Myth vs. Invasion on this channel. So I'm not exactly sure. We'll keep you updated in the chat and on the stream. Yeah, we'll just redirect you wherever you guys should be for more Dota. But that's it for us right now, at least for now. Uh, we might be back more later. We have Battle Central Europe later on our Hitbox channel, but that's about it.